Turn to the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 2, and we'll take our text tonight from verse 16. We will get out of chapter 2 tonight and start in chapter 3. But there was just a few things we needed to finish up in chapter 2 before we do that, so that's what we'll do tonight. Let's all stand and read out of Romans chapter 2 and verse 16. The Bible says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. Thank you for teaching us your word. And tonight, Father, we pray that you will teach us your word. Preach through me, Father, and teach through me the very things that you would have us to hear. Now, Father, I'm nothing. I know I'm nothing. But you're everything. Tonight, Father, the word needs to touch our heart. So I pray that you will, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you will help us to understand, help us to never... Lord, leave the things that you have taught us. Help us to remember them. And Father, tonight we love you with all of our heart. We don't deserve the things you do for us. But Father, we are so thankful. And Father, we pray this in the most precious name I know, and that's the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, tell somebody you love them tonight. not sure whose idea this was. Well, amen. It was good. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we were in this message, which was entitled, We Are Not the Judge. It had so many different things about the Jews there that they were doing that was against what God really wanted. We know at Jerusalem, of course, those Jews were saved, and then um, they had kindly went down into Rome, and they were spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and many of the Gentiles were finding the Lord, and God is explaining to them what it means against the law, well, what it is, the law versus grace now, and last week, we, or two weeks ago, we talked about the judgment of man and the hypocrisy of man found there in verses 1 through 3. There in that hypocrisy, we found out the, uh, that it was the hypocrisy of the Jews. The Jews were quick to judge someone else for the same things that they were guilty of themselves. It kind of sounds like the day and time that we live in. We need to always be careful tonight, folks, that... We're not pointing the finger at somebody else. We need to understand who we are and what God has done for us. So the Jews were guilty of that. The second thing we saw was the hardness of their hearts found in Romans chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. How many of you know tonight that God was very patient with the Jews? He always was. He was patient with them. His goodness and his... Uh, forbearance about them had been for the purpose of bringing them from under the law and in order to bring them to Christ. And that's what he wanted to do, but they had a hardness of heart. The second thing we talked about was the judgment of God. How does God judge? Well, God judges us and God judges according to deeds. The Bible says in Romans 2, 6 through 8, who will render to every man according to his deeds? To them who by patience, con uh, count continuance, in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, 
to them that are not doing what they're supposed to do and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. In the Old Testament, we know that people were forgiven by what? They were forgiven by repentance, but it was because of a blood sacrifice of an animal. That the animal was taken there to the temple and they were killed, and all the sins of the people were put in there. It didn't forgive sins, it just put sin off for a little while. But that's how the Old Testament saints receive forgiveness. And we know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, it finalized everything. It finalized it. How do we know that? Because God tells us that. He was and He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. And that includes you and me. He forgives us of our sins. The second thing we talked about is the fairness according to deeds. Fairness according to deeds found in Romans chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. And it says there, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also the Gentiles, but glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good. And then he goes on to say, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. God is leading them in to what it means to come out from under the law and come into grace and mercy. And we need to understand that tonight, that we live under grace and mercy of God. And thank His holy name that we do. You see, tribulation and anguish will come upon the man that doeth evil. It always has, it always will. You say, well, I've got friends that that they just live like the devil and nothing ever happens to them. Let me tell you something, folks. You don't know what happens with them. You don't understand sometimes. Because not only will they receive that anguish and tribulation in this life, but if they don't get saved, they'll receive it in the next life to come. The Bible says in Job chapter 15 verse 20, The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. Tonight we know this, and I hope we know this as Christians, that men and women without God are a miserable wreck. I see it every day. I hear it every day. I talk to people every day that their life is a wreck because they're not saved. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. They're in sin. I am so glad tonight that I'm saved. How about you? And by the way, sin always, if, you, if you're living in sin and not saved, you always, always come up empty. There is nothing going to fulfill you until you get Jesus Christ in your heart. Nothing. And we know that tonight because we're saved. The third thing we talked about was the judgment of Christ. We looked at the law There's a, there in Romans chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. Human beings, since the beginning of time, have pushed God aside. They, they, they have run from God. They have not wanted God to do anything in their lives. We've seen that with Adam and Eve. After they sinned, they ran from God. They hid from God. There's still people tonight hiding from God. And we need to understand, it is not that they could not know Him, because even today we understand that people can know the Lord Jesus Christ if they will only hear the word and accept the word. They can know him in a personal way. What they did in this time during the Romans and what God was talking about, they chose everything else but him. They chose idol worship. They, uh, they chose evil spirits. And it has followed race and, and gender. And after race, uh, it just keeps on going that they do that now. In our country alone, we don't look at God as the only God. We have many gods now that people talk about and, and, and bow down to. But I'm here to tell you, I serve the real God, the only God. So tonight, let's look at this and then we will get, this is where we're going to get into the sermon for tonight. I want to look at the judge just for a moment. Let's look at the judge. Who is this judge? Who's going to judge these people and who is able to judge these people? 
Well, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 2, verse 16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, he shall judge them, is what it should say, he should judge them by Jesus Christ, and he will judge them by Jesus Christ. According to what? Read that with me. According to what? According to his gospel, according to the word. What does the word say? You see, in our day and time, we have tried to belittle the Word. We have said that the Word doesn't really mean anything, that you can't go by the Word. God says that in the end, He's going to judge you and me by this Word. By the Word. So if He's going to judge us by the Word, how many of you know the Word's truth? The Word is truth. And Jesus will be the judge. Jude 14, uh, verse 14 and verse 15 says it this way. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of, their, of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. Isn't that something? You use that word so many times. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You don't get away with blaspheming God. You don't get away without accepting the Lord. One of these days, the Bible says that all will stand before Him. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. And it's the truth. Jesus is the judge. And He's going to judge every man according to the gospel, according to the word of God. According to what thus saith the Lord. That's how important the word is. Romans 2.16, as I just read a few minutes ago, says, In that day, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So, what is the gospel? Well, Paul uh, spells it out for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Here's what he said the gospel is. Now listen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherewith you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture. And then he was buried, buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the gospel. If you don't accept the gospel, if you don't accept the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot and you will not be saved. That's what Jesus says. If we reject it, reject what, preacher? The gospel, then you have no hope. And the Bible says they'll be judged according, uh, uh, according to the law which they were unable to keep. So now Paul's getting into why that the Jews said it's Jesus plus the law, and he's saying you can't keep the law. How many of you know that tonight? You can't. There's no way we can. We fail. All of us do. So he's going into a message now to tell these Jews that they're judged according to the gospel. And the gospel is grace and mercy. The New Testament teaches it all the way through it that we're, we're, we're saved and we have his grace and mercy upon our lives. It's not what we do, it's what he's done. And that's what Jesus is telling us. Uh, and you can't live any other way. And thank God tonight, there is no judgment for those who have received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And you ought to say a hearty amen right there. Amen. Romans 8, 1 puts it this way, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? The Spirit. The Spirit. John 3.18 says it this way, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not, he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Fourthly tonight, the judgment of the Jew. 
Let's look at a double standard, Romans chapter 2, verses 17 through 23. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and uh, resisteth the law, and maketh thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou, therefore, which teachest another, teachest, uh, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that saith a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. He said you can't have these double standards, he's telling these Jews. You can't live in a double standard. And I will say that to us tonight. Christians, you can't live a double standard. You can't come to church on Sunday and be holier than thou and then go out into the middle of the week and live like the devil. Because you confuse people. You confuse them of what it really means to be saved and know the Lord Jesus Christ. And God says that's wrong. And that's a double standard. And a lot of people are living by a, a double standard. Again, he is... He is speaking to hypocrites here. Paul talks about how the Jews boast in the law uh, what they have uh, the, the way of right that they have the way of righteousness and that they're being instructed out of the law. They claim to be leaders of the spiritually blind that they are the light to them, the men and women that are in darkness. That's what they say. These Jews are saying this, and yet they don't practice what they preach. They don't live by the standards they set out there. They tell a person not to commit adultery, and yet they commit adultery. They claim to abhor idols, and yet they, they, they commit and bow down to idols. It's awful to judge. And we do it in the way that we do it. We talk about somebody doing something that they're not supposed to do, and then we're doing the same things. And God says it's wrong, and he's tired of it. And he says, don't do that. That's the reason Paul is teaching this to the Jews. But also, the Bible is here tonight so we can teach it to each other. So that we can know what God wants. In Romans 2.23, it says, Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonors thou God. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 4, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. They tell you how to do it, but they won't do it themselves, is what he's saying. And folks, we live in a society like that tonight. The worst it's ever been. You said, how do you know that? Because the Bible says in the end times that it would get worse and worse. That things would be worse. And we're there now, tonight. Secondly, not only is there a double standard here, but there's a bad testimony. Look at Romans chapter 2, verses 24 through 29. For the name of God is blaspheme among the Gentiles through you. He's talking to the Jews. As it is written, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee? who by the letter of the circumcision doth transgress the law. For he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, 
in the Spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. Now I want you to listen real close here because you'll miss the whole thing if you don't get this. What Paul is saying here in this passage is he's discussing circumcision. Circumcision was given to the Jews. It was a sign between God and man. It was a sign. What kind of sign? Well, it was a picture of separation. The Jews, circumcision was a picture that God had separated them from the world. It's a picture of a surrender to God. That's what it meant. So when the Jews practiced the law, then his circumcision was a testimony to his righteousness. Everybody understand that? When the Jew practiced the law, his circumcision was a testimony of his righteousness. But when the Jew broke the law, the fact that he had been circumcised had little meaning at all. But now listen. And this was a bad testimony to, uh, to the Gentiles, you see. They were saying, it's the law, it's the law. But when they broke the law, it was a bad testimony to the Gentiles. And God was saying to them, it's all changed now. It's not like that anymore. And he's going to tell them why it's not like that. He's going to show them what has happened, that it's not like that anymore. Romans 2.24 says, For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written, because you're doing these things, and they don't understand it. Then he goes down in verse 26 and talking about the uncircumcision. This refers to the Gentile. Paul writes here in Romans chapter 2, verse 26. Now listen, stay with me. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? In other words, the Gentiles who sought to practice the law and were faithful to it, it was as if they were circumcised. They had put off the filth of the flesh and they had surrendered to God, is what it meant. They put off the flesh and surrendered to God. They were in their heart trying to do what was right. In Romans 2.29 it says, But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. What God is saying here is the law can't make you perfect in God's eyes. It can't. Because everybody will fail. The law cannot make you perfect in the eyes of God. Uh, all outward works, including circumcision, but this will not cleanse away sin. Law will not cleanse away sin, and keeping it will not cleanse away sin. It will... It will never do it, nor will it remove a critical and judgmental spirit because it has no power to. The only way a man or woman can be clean is by having their heart circumcised. The cutting of the Holy Spirit. When we're in church and some preacher is preaching the Word of God and our heart uh, starts to pound out of our chest and the Holy Spirit is working on us because we're lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. And he starts to cut on that heart and cut on that heart and all of a sudden we get up from where we're at or in our house or wherever we're at. We get on our knees and we say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Then what Jesus was saying, under grace and mercy, the Holy Spirit comes into our heart and circumcises our heart and makes us clean. That's what he does. He makes us clean. And that only happens when a person, when you or I, receive Christ as our Savior. You can't come to church and say you're saved if you've never been saved. You can't sing in the choir and say, because I sing in the choir, I'm saved, if you've never been saved. Amen. The only way you're saved is by circumcision of the Holy Spirit that cuts our heart out of us through conviction and we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. How many agree on that? Say amen. 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 
Colossians 2.11 says it this way, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Now listen, here he's explaining it. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. In other words, by the operation, by the cutting of the Holy Spirit through Christ is the only way that we can be saved. That's the reason we say to people, you know, that say, I'm just going to wait till the time I get ready to die. I'll just get saved right before I die. And listen, folks, if there's not the cutting of the Holy Spirit, if there's not the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, how many of you know tonight, you cannot and you will not get saved? It's important, isn't it? It's important to have the Holy Spirit work on us. You ought to thank God, Christian, every time the Holy Spirit works on you. Because we're all sinners. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. And I thank God every time the Holy Spirit convicts me of my sin. Because you know why He does that? Because He's, he's, he's your daddy, He's your heavenly Father, and He wants you to be right with Him. Amen. And I'm glad... That I'm saved and I hear from the Holy Spirit. How about you? Amen. I'm saved and I hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm only in a little early tonight because I want the choir to have a little time. So we'll get on into the next message next week. Let's thank the Lord for the preaching of His Word tonight. Father, I love you with all my heart. And I thank you for your precious word because your word is precious. And Lord, I am learning so much in the book of Romans. And Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for allowing me to preach the book of Romans. And I pray, Father, that we'll all learn something, how, how precious our salvation is. Lord, I am so thankful that I live under grace and mercy. I'm so thankful for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm so thankful tonight for salvation. That I don't live under the law. I live under grace. Thank you for what you're doing for us. I pray for our homecoming service this Sunday. I pray, Lord Jesus, that people will be saved. I pray, Lord Jesus, that this place will be packed with hungry people ready to hear the word of God I pray for brother Matthew and Chelsea I pray for them as they come I pray protection as they travel I pray that you'll bring them here safe and I pray that Sunday morning will be a wonderful time brother Bobby's he comes to give a little of his testimony Sunday morning I pray you bless him God I pray you bless the preaching Sunday Sunday night, all the testimonies, use those testimonies to touch the heart of men and women and boys and girls. And I pray for Brother Kevin Lewis as he comes to share the gospel with us. Give him the, the message. Lord, just help him preach like he's never preached before. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. You may be